seven seconds of triumph, followed by an unexpected turn of events. While the world watched Ship 33's dramatic finale, another story was unfolding right back at Starbase, one that would prove just as crucial to the future of spaceflight. On January 16, 2025, Booster 14 made history as it gracefully descended toward the launch tower at Boca Chica. The mechanical arms reached out, executing a precise choreography of engineering that would mark only the second successful catch in Starship's history. But beneath this achievement lies a complex web of challenges that few have stopped to examine. From an engine that initially refused to light, to subtle signs of structural stress that emerged in the aftermath, Booster 14's journey tells a story of both breakthrough and concern, one that deserves our full attention. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, and today we're pulling back the curtain on what really happened with Booster 14 during Flight 7, before, during, and after its historic catch. The answers might surprise you. Let's dive right in. The mechanical arms of the launch tower stood ready in the Texas dawn, awaiting a reunion with their massive metal dance partner. Booster 14's return to Earth would mark only the second time in history that SpaceX attempted this precise aerial ballet, a 230-foot-tall rocket gracefully descending into the waiting arms of Mechazilla. But before we delve into those crucial final moments, let's trace back to what made this flight different. As Booster 14 lifted off from Starbase that January morning, the SpaceX team knew they were pushing boundaries. The previous success with Booster 12 during Flight 5 had given them confidence, but space exploration never guarantees an encore performance. The first sign that Booster 14 would write its own unique story came during the boost back phase. As the massive first stage began its calculated return, one of its Raptor engines refused to wake from its brief slumber. In the world of rocket science, where millisecond timing and perfect synchronization reign supreme, this momentary hesitation sent ripples through mission control. The engine eventually roared to life during the landing burn. But this early stumble raised critical questions about the complex dance between hardware and software. Think about the sheer audacity of what SpaceX is attempting here. Each Raptor engine is a marvel of engineering, pushing the boundaries of what's possible with methane propulsion. When one of these powerhouses shows even the slightest hesitation, it's like a prima ballerina missing a step in a perfectly choreographed performance. The implications stretch far beyond this single flight. They touch the very heart of SpaceX's vision for rapid reusability. The engine anomaly wasn't just a technical hiccup. It was a window into the countless variables SpaceX must master. Every sensor reading, every line of code, every mechanical movement must work in perfect harmony. The team's ability to adapt and compensate for this unexpected behavior showcases the robust design philosophy that's become a hallmark of the Starship program. As Booster 14 continued its descent, eagle-eyed observers noticed something else, a subtle but concerning detail in the engine section. Photos captured what appeared to be warping during the relight phase. While heat distortion from camera angles might explain these images, they sparked intense debate within the space community. Was this a sign of structural stress? A new challenge for the engineering team to overcome. The real drama peaked during the catch attempt. Unlike its predecessor, Booster 12, Booster 14 exhibited increased oscillation after being secured by the chopstick arms. This wasn't just a subtle vibration. It was a visible reminder of the immense forces at play. The tower's arms, designed to cradle a rocket weighing as much as a small passenger aircraft, had to maintain their grip while compensating for these unexpected movements. But there's more to this story than just the technical challenges. Behind every decision, every adjustment, stands a team of dedicated engineers and technicians. They've poured countless hours into understanding these systems, anticipating failure modes, and building redundancies. When reports emerged of catch ramps showing signs of wear, it wasn't just about replacing hardware, it was about understanding the complex interaction between materials under extreme stress. The catch mechanism itself represents one of the most ambitious aspects of the Starship program. It's a testament to human ingenuity that we've reached a point where catching a rocket has become a realistic goal. But success brings its own challenges. 
The software controlling this operation processes thousands of data points in real time, making split-second decisions that mean the difference between triumph and disaster. What's particularly fascinating is how SpaceX balances automation with human oversight. Even with all the advanced algorithms and sensors, a flight director must still give the final go-ahead for the catch attempt. This hybrid approach speaks to the wisdom gained from previous flights, acknowledging that human judgment remains crucial even in our most automated systems. Comparing Flight 7 to its predecessors reveals an evolution in complexity. While Flight 5's Booster 12 set the standard for smooth execution, Booster 14 pushed the envelope further. Each new variable introduced, from engine modifications to structural improvements, adds another layer of complexity to an already intricate operation. The data gathered from this flight is invaluable. Every wobble, every delayed ignition, every stress pattern tells a story. These aren't failures. They're breadcrumbs leading toward improvement. The SpaceX team will analyze this information with their characteristic thoroughness, using it to refine and enhance future designs. Looking at the broader implications, Booster 14's performance raises important questions about the pace of innovation. Should SpaceX maintain their rapid iteration approach or take more time between design changes? The answer likely lies in finding the sweet spot between aggressive progress and methodical refinement. The structural behavior observed during and after the catch deserves particular attention. The increased wobbling compared to Booster 12 might indicate changes in mass distribution, environmental factors, or subtle differences in the catch mechanism's engagement. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for achieving the holy grail of spaceflight, true rapid reusability. What makes this mission particularly significant is its role in validating SpaceX's catch and reuse strategy. Traditional rocket recovery methods involve ocean landings or ground pads. The tower catch approach, while more complex, promises faster turnaround times and better hardware preservation. Each successful catch brings us closer to a future where spacecraft operate more like airlines than traditional rockets. The engine relight issue observed during Flight 7 opens up new avenues for investigation. Was this a one-off anomaly or a sign of a deeper design consideration? The fact that the engine eventually came online suggests robust backup systems, but in the world of rocket science, understanding every deviation is crucial. Post-flight analysis revealed another intriguing detail the pattern of thermal stress on the booster surface. These thermal signatures tell a story of atmospheric re-entry, providing valuable data for future thermal protection system improvements. Each scorch mark and heat pattern helps engineers refine their models and better understand the forces at play. The success of Booster 14's catch, despite its challenges, validates SpaceX's iterative approach to development. Rather than pursuing perfection in a vacuum, they're learning and improving through real-world testing. Each flight adds to a growing database of knowledge that will prove invaluable as Starship moves toward regular operational status. As we analyze the significance of this flight, it's worth noting how far the program has come. Just a few years ago, catching a massive rocket booster with mechanical arms seemed like science fiction. Now we're discussing the fine details of how to optimize the process. This is the pace of progress that SpaceX has made possible. This mission demonstrated that while perfection remains the goal, progress comes through embracing and learning from each challenge. The engine relight delay, structural observations, and post-catch dynamics aren't setbacks. They're opportunities for improvement in SpaceX's relentless pursuit of reliable, reusable spaceflight. As the sun sets over Starbase tonight, Booster 14 stands as a testament to both triumph and challenge. Its journey has revealed crucial insights about engine reliability, structural dynamics, and the intricate dance of catching a returning rocket. While some questions remain about the engine relight sequence and post-catch oscillations, one thing is certain. Each flight brings us closer to regular, reliable space access. The next chapter of Booster 14's story is still being written in the data being analyzed, the systems being refined, and the lessons being applied. Your insights and observations have been invaluable in this discussion. The questions you've raised in the comments help drive this conversation forward. Join us on Elon Musk 24 hours as we continue to document this remarkable journey. Hit subscribe to stay updated on the latest developments and don't forget to like this video 
if you found our deep dive into Booster 14's performance enlightening. Share your thoughts below. What aspect of the catch sequence impressed you most? What questions do you still have about the engine relight sequence? This is Elon Musk 24 hours, bringing you the stories that shape the future of spaceflight. See you in tomorrow's episode. On January 16th, 2025, history was made as Blue Origin's massive New Glenn rocket thundered off the launch pad for its maiden flight. The morning sky erupted with the brilliant flame of seven BE-4 engines, pushing the boundaries of private spaceflight to new heights. But what started as a moment of triumph took an unexpected turn during the crucial booster recovery phase, a phase that SpaceX has mastered over hundreds of successful landings. As the massive booster descended through the atmosphere toward its designated landing ship in the Atlantic Ocean, something went wrong. The engines reignited as planned, but in those final moments, the live stream cut out, leaving space enthusiasts worldwide holding their breath. What exactly happened in those critical seconds? Today, we're breaking down the newly surfaced reports that shed light on this landing anomaly. And there's more. While Blue Origin analyzes their first flight data, SpaceX isn't standing still. They're already preparing for their next ambitious Starship launch, incorporating crucial lessons from Flight 7 into what could be their most successful test yet. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we bring you the latest developments in private spaceflight. Let's dive right in. The BE-4 engines roared to life in the pre-dawn darkness of Cape Canaveral. Their brilliant blue flame illuminating the launch pad as New Glenn Blue Origin's most ambitious project to date began its journey to space. After years of development, countless tests, and the watchful eyes of the space community, this moment represented more than just another rocket launch. It was Blue Origin's entry into the orbital launch market, a direct challenge to SpaceX's dominance in reusable rocketry. The initial ascent was picture perfect. As New Glenn pushed through the sound barrier, its seven BE-4 engines performed flawlessly, demonstrating the culmination of over a decade of engine development. The rocket's massive frame, standing nearly as tall as NASA's Saturn V, carved through the morning sky with a grace that belied its enormous size. For the team at Blue Origin, these first minutes of flight validated years of careful engineering and countless sleepless nights. But the real test was yet to come. While successfully reaching orbit would mark a significant achievement, the true innovation lay in New Glenn's reusability, a feature that has revolutionized the economics of spaceflight since SpaceX first landed a Falcon 9 booster. As the second stage continued its journey to orbit, all eyes turned to the complex choreography of bringing a 23-story tall booster back to Earth. This is where the story takes an unexpected turn. The initial descent appeared normal, with the booster beginning its carefully programmed series of maneuvers. However, keen observers noticed something unusual during the entry burn phase. The engine plume, typically a clear indicator of engine performance, showed signs of trouble. Instead of the characteristic bright focused flame, the plume appeared diffuse and discolored, a telltale sign of improper propellant mixture. Our analysis of the technical data reveals a fascinating chain of events that led to this anomaly. During the booster's flip maneuver, a critical moment when it reorients itself for atmospheric entry, the liquid oxygen and methane propellants behaved in unexpected ways. The rapid change in orientation, combined with New Glenn's unique tank configuration, created a perfect storm of challenges. Think of it like trying to pour water from a partially filled bottle while doing a backflip. The liquid doesn't just stay at the bottom, it sloshes, creates bubbles, and becomes unpredictable. In New Glenn's case, this phenomenon, known as propellant slosh, had serious consequences. The liquid oxygen stored in the bottom tank experienced particularly severe movement during the flip maneuver. This disrupted the careful balance of propellants needed for the BE-4 engines to operate properly. The turbo pumps, sophisticated pieces of machinery that feed propellants into the combustion chamber at incredibly high pressures, suddenly found themselves struggling with an inconsistent supply of liquid oxygen. It's similar to trying to drink a smoothie with air bubbles in the straw. 
except these bubbles were moving at supersonic speeds through precision equipment designed for liquid flow. This disruption created a cascade of effects. Without the proper oxygen supply, the engines began burning fuel rich, producing less thrust than needed for the carefully calculated landing sequence. The shortened burn time, approximately 15 seconds less than planned, left the booster traveling faster than intended with compromised control authority for its final approach. The live stream cut out during these critical moments, but new analysis suggests the booster's fate was likely sealed by this point. The combination of higher than planned velocity and compromised engine performance made a successful landing virtually impossible. For the Blue Origin team, watching years of work disappear into the Atlantic Ocean must have been heart-wrenching. Yet this failure provides invaluable data for future improvements. This setback draws interesting